God bless you, my Christian friends. We are here once again to study the Bible through our virtual Bible study here at Modern Memorial Temple CME Church. We will continue in our study of John chapter 17. Jesus prays for you. On last week, we talked about Jesus prayed for your description. And in praying for your description, he prayed for four things that you would have. Four things. Number one, you would be secure. Number two, you would be satisfied. Number three, you would be separated. And number four, you would be sanctified. He prayed for your description that you would have security, that you would be satisfied, that you would be separated, and that you would be sanctified. Well, on today, we want to talk about Jesus' praise about your duty. And we want to look at verses 20 through 23 first, and then verses 25 through 26 next. That's John 17, verses 20 through 23 and 25 through 26. Verse 20, I ask not on behalf of these, but also on behalf of those who will believe in me and through their word, that they may all be one. As you, Father, are in me, I am in you. May they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given them so that they may be one as we are one. I and them and you and me, that they may become completely one so that the world may know that you have sent me and I have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I desire that, though, I desire that also those whom you have given me may be with me where I am to see my glory, which you have given me un because you love me before the foundations of the world. Righteous Father, the world does not know you, but I know you, and these know that you have sent me. I made your name known to them, and I will make it known so that the, so that the love that which you have loved me may be in them, and I in them. So today I want to talk about Jesus prays about your duty. Jesus prays about your duty in verses 20 through 23 and 25 through 26. Number one, he prays that you have the duty of agreement. That's the first thing in verses 20 through 23. He prays that you have the duty of agreement. Christ desires for his people is that they be one. One, many members, but one body. Many members, but one body. That's the main thing that Christ desires of all believers, regardless of denominational affiliations, all Christ is saying he desires that we would be one. That is, he wants us to walk in unity. He wants us to walk together. The secret is being able to disagree without being disagreeable. In other words, everything we do must be done with a view to maintaining unity within the body of Christ. He says, I desire my hope, my prayer, my wish. In verse 22, the glory that you have given me, I have given them so that they may be one as we are one. Many members, one body. No one person can go off and do their own thing, do what they want to do in the body of Christ. No, we are united. We are together. That's the first thing that in our duty as in walking as Christians, God wants us to walk together. How shall two agree except what? How can two walk together except they agree? So Christ is saying, I, I know we have different personalities. I know we don't all think the same, but my desire in the body of Christ is unity. Not the pulpit against the pew, not the pew against the pulpit, not, not trustees against stewards or ushers against choir members, but everybody working together in love and harmony in unity in Christ. But then he says, notice, the Lord has always wanted unity for the believers. Why is unity so important in the church? Why? I tell you why. Because we are a living advertisement for the Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. When the world sees the people of God, they either see the confusion or they 
let me let me correct that. They they either see the presence of the Lord or the presence of confusion. Let me correct that. Where there is strife, there is confusion, and God is not the author of confusion. So that's why unity in the church is so important. So nobody will be able to say, well, the people in the church doing in and everything they want to do. Therefore, that's why I don't go to church because they're doing the same thing we're doing in the world. They either see unity or they see confusion. And we all know God is not the author of confusion. So God prays that, number one, that we have a duty of agreement. And that duty of agreement is assigned to oneness in Christ, oneness in the body of the church, unity in the body of the church. But then he goes on to say, he, he prays that you have the duty of affection. That's in verses 25 through 26. He prays. Not only is he concerned about people being in one mind or, or being united, he's all he also wants us to be in love with one another. As Jesus brought his prayer to a close, he took a minute to pray that we would be filled with with love. That is, he desires that his people be characterized by a life of love. Righteous Father, the world does not know you, but I know you. And these that you have sent me, I've made your name known to them, and I will make it known so that the love that which you have loved me may be in them, and I am them. Love. How shall I know that you are my disciple if you have love one for another? This world of ours is so hateful when, when, when a white officer can continue to put his knee on the neck of a man who's handcuffed that's saying, I can't breathe, I can't breathe, and but, 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 but you won't move, you won't get up? Our world is full of hate. And so if the world is already full of hate, one place that should not have hate, one place that should not have bitterness, one place that, that should not have envy or jealousy is the church. One place that should not have strife or confusion is the church because it's enough of that in the world. So God, through Jesus, is challenging us, church, to number one, be unified. Because if we have unity in the church, if we have oneness in the church, secondly, we can have love. We can have affection. The, the first agreement is we have to be united. Somebody saying, well, well, how can we be united and we're not even in the church? Well, you are the church. You don't have to be in the building to be united. You are the church. I just said we are the living advertisement for Jesus and God in his church. So that's the first order of business. The first duty for the church, for us who are believers is number one, we need to be united. Secondly, we need to have some love, some affection for our brothers and sisters. But then Jesus goes on to pray about our destination in verse 24. Watch this verse 24. Father, I desire that those also whom you have given me may be with me where I am to see my glory, which you have given me because you love me before the foundations of the world. Jesus declares that it is his will that his people be with him in heaven. Mm. In heaven. In heaven. Jesus reminds us that heaven is a prepared place for a prepared people in John 14. There's no place like heaven where Jesus is the light and God will dwell in the midst of his people. So here it is. He said, I, I want them to be where I am. But the only way you can do that is that you, you have to be in Christ Jesus. You have to be a believer. You have to announce it. You have to profess it. You have to confess it. You have to say, I believe in God the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth. That's the only way. He said, I desire that those also whom you have given me may be with me where I am to see my glory, which you have given me because you love me even before the foundations of the world. Christ is saying, I have a house, I have a home, I have a dwelling for those who believe in me, and I want them to be there with me. That's good news. Jesus prayed for our description. 
and that he says it at the beginning of the of the chapter he said lord i pray that they would be protected i pray for their protection then he says i pray that they have the joy that i have that security and that satisfaction and then he says they are in the world but they are not of the world because the world hates them because they belong they belong to me he said i want them to be separated but then he said i have sanctified them so really, the, the first order of business is we have to get our description together. We can't look like everybody else. We can't talk like everybody else. We can't do what everybody else does because we have been separated for such a time as this. Christ has already prayed for our security, for our satisfaction, that we be separated, and then that we be sanctified. But he moves from a description to the duty. Because now that you have a description of what Christ want us, wants us to look like, now you have a duty to go out there. And then and, and, and the first duty is to have an agreement of unity. You must be one. Many members, but one body. But after you move from that agreement, then Christ says, I need you to have some affection. I need you to love your brother. I need you to love your sister. I need you to love other people that sometimes it's hard and difficult to love them. But because you belong to me, you need to love in spite of and not because of. But then he says, not only do I pray for their description, not only do I pray about their duty, but then thirdly, I pray about their destination. Because the reality is one of these days, all of us going to leave this place. And we're going and, and guess what? We're not going to remain here on earth. And so Christ is saying, I have a dwelling that I have prepared for them. I want them to, I want them to know my glory. I want them to be where I am. Because I have already prepared in my father's house a, a many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. That where I am, you may be there also. That's good news. That in the midst of a pandemic, Jesus Christ is praying for me. I'm done. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah. Thine the glory. Revive us again. Just know whatever you're going through, Jesus has already prayed for you. And we can shout hallelujah. Thine the glory. Revive us again. Until next time. Until next time. Until we meet again. My prayer. Is that God would protect you. That God would be with you. That God would give you the desires of your heart. And please know. He's praying for you. Because guess what? You're safe in his arms.